Thank you very much. I'm really excited about this interview because this is, uh, well, first let me introduce you, Nassar al Khori, right? right? And you are the, um, with the Supreme Committee for the World Cup, yes. uh, Qatar 2022. So this is a great opportunity for me because for a long time I was a sports writer. Uh, so I covered the World Cups since 1986, so I'm aging myself there a little bit. But yeah, when uh, Mexico, Italy, the US, France, Japan, Korea, and Germany, that was my last official one as a sports writer, sports reporter for newspapers, news agencies, and then television. And then um, South Africa and Brazil, it was more like combining automotive and, and, uh, and the World Cup. And Russia was the one I was like, the first one that I watched was, was like as a fan. So <laughs> I'm really excited to have you here in Miami. You, and uh, tell us why are you here in Miami, please? Yeah, so we're here in Miami for the a, a couple of things. So first of all, we participated yesterday in the Concordia America Summit. So Concordia is an annual conference that you know we've been present at in the last couple of years, in 2018 and 2019 as well, right before the pandemic. And yeah. Uh, mainly, you know, in New York during the UN General Assembly week, uh, but uh, you know the, the the conference over the last two days, yesterday and the day before, uh, focused on the Americas. So it's kind of the annual summit for the Americas, and because we have the partnership with Concacaf, uh, we have a four-year partnership, a strategic partnership with Concacaf. That so the, the the World Cup from Qatar with with this. Yeah. Event. So 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 the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, the Qatar Football Association, and Generation Amazing, we partnered with Concacaf. Obviously, we. Our national team played in the Gold Cup last year. Yeah, uh, they did really well. We did really well. We yeah. reached to the semifinals. I know. Uh, so that was, and we were there. We were there at the. We, oh, really? We attended Great. the matches, yeah. yeah. And Houston and and uh, and Phoenix as well. And so, you know, the the partnership here, yeah, you know, there's a couple of different elements to the, to the strategic partnership. There's the you know, national team playing in the Gold Cup. And then, as part of that, there is also the youth uh, coach education development uh, football for development program yeah. as well that is you know complementing uh, Concacaf's uh, next play program, which is their main uh, flagship CSR program, and then Generation Amazing, which is a human and social legacy initiative, and now foundation from the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy from Qatar. Uh, we created a hybrid curriculum, uh, which we are now rolling out in the forty-one member associations. Wow. We're looking at 10 countries per year. We started now with 10 countries. Uh, today, actually this morning, we were at the, uh, the CONCAF headquarters and we launched the program, obviously virtually. And you know, we're very excited to kind of roll out and look at you know, youth development through football. So we focus on you know, building global citizens, looking at values, looking at uh, life skills, yeah. because I think you know, uh, football generally is, is sports generally, but football specifically has a really unique transformative power to change Absolutely, people's lives yeah. and to impact people people's lives uh, positively. So we harness that power of sports and, and football specifically to kind of you know uh, give a lot of uh, disadvantaged and marginalized youth an opportunity in their communities to become leaders in their community to use football as a tool for social development and social progress to to identify and address social issues as well. So that's, you know, in a sense, that's kind of, uh, you know, our partnership with CONCACAF. And I think, you know, CONCACAF and, and, and the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, Generation Amazing, and the Qatar Football Association, we have a very similar uh, vision in terms of, you know, grassroots football and community development yeah. through football. So I think that's what, you know, makes it, you know, a, a natural fit for us to work together. And, you know, we're excited to, for the next, you know, four years, but also beyond that and looking at legacy for, United 26 and, and doing more in the US as well. So. Yeah. It's very interesting because when a regular or a casual fan uh, hears about the World Cup, they're excited for that month, the, what is it now, 64 games, right? Like yeah. right now. But really, the work has started a long time ago, and then like the actual month of competition is really important, obviously, and very excited because I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to come to Qatar. We'll talk about that in a, in a bit, like how it's preparing for that. But as you were saying, the work at the legacy is probably the most important part of it, right? Like, yeah. Uh, hopefully, that that the excitement of one month like translates for a longer yes, time. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I think that the the, the one unique uh, uh, aspect to the World Cup uh, Qatar 2022 uh, is the focus on legacy. I think legacy started uh, in the early stages of our bid for the World Cup. You know, Generation Amazing was initiated. Yeah and a few other legacy initiatives as well, the sustainability aspects of the World Cup, 
the sustainable stadiums and the innovation and the cooling technologies. So, so obviously, I'm sure you read and heard about the cooling technologies. Yeah, but that I haven't have. much, but uh, yeah. So, so all of the stadiums are climate controlled, uh, you know, and, and there's a very innovative cooling technology that basically, you know, uses chilled water to produce cold air, and it's a it's yeah. a sustainable kind of you know environmentally friendly instead of uh, chemical like green or yeah, yeah. exactly. And so, so from that perspective, you know, that that's that's a unique aspect of the World Cup, and I think. You know, from an innovation perspective, you know the stadiums are state of the art stadiums. It's going to be a very unique experience for them. They're ready. They have to be ready. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all of the stadiums are ready, uh, except for Lucille, which is going to be um, used for the final stadium yeah. for the final uh, match for the World Cup. All of the other stadiums have been inaugurated and tested okay. over the last couple of years. Yeah, FIFA has a very strict uh, yes, yes, yes. process to, yes, uh, to yes. whether, we, right? we posted mega sporting events like yeah. the, the, the Club's World Cup in 2019. Yeah. We had the Arab Cup last year. It was very successful. Uh, you know, again, it's the first time the FIFA Arab Cup takes place. It took place in Doha. We used, yeah. you know, we tested the stadiums. And I think that was a really unique uh, opportunity for us as well. And I think from a fan experience perspective, it's going to be a very interesting uh, World Cup experience because it's also the most compact World Cup in the history yeah. of World Cups. Yeah, tell me about uh, the, 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 the distances because it's yeah. a small country, so it's very easy to, to move from one place yeah, to another, right? Yeah, Qatar is a small country indeed. And, and you know, all the stadiums are within a 60 kilometer radius. I don't oh, wow. know what that is in miles, but. Uh, That's about 40, 40, 40 miles. miles. Yes. So, so from Miami to Boca Raton, which is like an hour. Basically, yeah, yeah, which makes it also very unique because I, I bet it's less traffic too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but the, the traffic in Miami is bad. It's inconsistent. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to <laughs> to, to maneuver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think you know the one unique thing is that the fans are going to be able to attend more than one match per day. Oh wow! Um, so it's not like you know Russia and, and some of yeah, the or, or here in the U.S. or in the U.S. When he was in the U.S., uh, I mean Boston to California, yeah, or like like a, Orlando like to five six hour yeah, flight, yeah. flight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think you know you're you're going to be in a car for maybe forty minutes to drive from one stadium to the next, but uh, that's a unique aspect of the World Cup from an, uh, an environmental footprint perspective. It's it's also, you know, environmentally, uh, you know, the carbon emissions and, you know, we're doing a lot of work around that as well, kind of, you know, uh, uh, eliminating some of the, or offsetting some of the carbon emissions yeah. as well. Um, so there's a lot of aspects of, and focus on sustainability uh, by the state of Qatar on, on kind of the design of the World Cup from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, since, you know, the, the very early stages of us initiating the bid. And then the other legacy aspects as well, not just with infrastructure, but the, on the human and social uh, front, you know, Generation Amazing Foundation and the work that we've been doing in, in the region, locally, uh, in the region, in the Arab world, and now globally as well with CONCACAF. Uh, we have a couple of other uh, partners and partnerships that we've initiated over the last couple of years. We've done some work in Argentina, in Iraq, in Uganda, in Myanmar, in Asia as well. and then. Obviously, we've done a lot of work uh, historically in, uh, in India, Pakistan, Nepal wow. um, as well. And, uh, and now we've launched our uh, first project in Africa, in Rwanda actually, a oh, few wow. weeks ago. And we've built a facility in Rwanda that complements the government's uh, rehabilitation program in partnership with the Ministry of Youth, uh, Youth and Sports of Rwanda. Um, and the, the facility basically, you know, we've, we've built uh, football and volleyball and basketball sports, facility, sports yeah. facilities around the rehabilitation program that basically complements the, the, the rehab uh, program for the out-of-school children in, in Rwanda. So that's, that's a unique kind of, you know, customized program. But, you know, generally over the last uh, 10 years, we've impacted over 800,000 uh, marginalized and, and, and disadvantaged youth, uh, a lot of them are refugees or internationally displaced uh, individuals or communities. Um, you know, we've built and refurbished over 35 football pitches that, you know, we created safe spaces in communities mm -hmm. that don't have access. So we, we're, you know, we're providing access. I think access is a big issue for a lot of, you know, communities uh, in, in this region as well and in, in, in the, within the CONCACAF region. And that's something that we're discussing also with CONCACAF, but also on the human capital side you know uh, we've upskilled coaches we've you know we have an online uh, football for development uh, education course that is accessible and, and yeah. free to anyone that wants to enroll in the program 
and I think you know again that's a legacy that lives beyond the World Cup and the tournament and the games because it's you know building human capital is very important we we try to unlock you know potential of of youth that we work with the coaches as well in the communities and create leaders uh, for tomorrow so so let's go back uh, a little bit about the logistics and all the things because I remember Hyundai which is the the, the connection, I guess, in, in my case now, to the World Cup. Hyundai is a world um, a partner with, for, with FIFA for all the World Cups. I don't know how long the deal is, but still for this one, right? And I remember in Germany they have hydrogen buses to transport the cars. I mean the teams and, and cars for the executives and all that. Is that going to be the case too? Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, Hyundai is, is one of the FIFA sponsors. But I think you know what we've done with the real uh, the Qatari real. Uh, System is that we built a state of the art uh, yeah. system as well, and this is something and that's that's available to go to every every stadium. It's, it's going to go to all the stadiums. It's connected. There's a. It's been sort of operational for the last you know year and a half now, oh, okay. uh, and I think this is also uh, it has a lot of sustainability aspects as well, uh, and I think that is a project also that you know again the, the you know the. The, it was built obviously for the World Cup, but it's also for yeah, it's the people for the after, country as yeah. well beyond the World Cup. So a lot of the infrastructure projects, and even the stadiums, you know, a lot of the stadiums will be repurposed after yeah. the World Cup. What would they do with them? So different, different. Uh, you know, there's there's plans. Every stadium has a plan. Uh, there was a lot of uh, engagement with the communities that are around the stadiums in the beginning before the stadiums were constructed. There were what what were the needs beyond that? Yes. Oh, so okay. there was. We have a department within the Supreme Committee that's in charge of that. It's called that's the great. Community Engagement, and they basically went out to all the communities. They knocked on people's doors. Uh, you know, you're 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 a, a, you know you live in this neighborhood. We're going to build a stadium. What do you want uh, the great. stadium to, to 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 provide for your community? After. So a lot of the community members, you know, wanted uh, let's say a, 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 a clinic, a restaurant, a, a wedding hall. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of aspects of you know that in terms of the legacy also for the for the stadiums in case we're you know because I think one thing that Bata did and learned from other countries uh, is you know empty stadiums. Yeah, like, like uh, South Africa exactly. had, had a problem. Brazil, yes. which is a Brazil crazy happened. soccer country in Manaus, they build a team yes. where I mean a stadium where there's no team. Exactly. So, so you know, again, going back to the, the point about the stadiums, you know, the sustainability aspects of the stadiums, but also the legacy piece as well is very important. And you know, everything that's been designed has, you know, there is a plan to repurpose all yeah. the spaces around the, the precincts around the stadiums too. El Bait Stadium, for example, which is in the north, has a you know a huge park for that community. There's a, a lot of outdoor space. There's a lot of um, facilities for the community soccer pitches etc uh, and that's a great thing about the architecture in the Middle East like it's so modern and I guess they, they already built it thinking that they were gonna make something else with it so it was yeah. smart uh, yeah smart exactly. there's, there's, been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of you know forward thinking and planning yeah. you know on, on ter- in terms of the so speaking the about stadium. the stadium let me go back a little bit in the work of history I mean I was, I'm from Mexico and I remember as a little kid uh, the first World Cup that I have memories of was 1970 in Mexico, where Pelé and uh, the great Brazilian team. And I remember we went to one game and we climbed the stairs and we had cheap tickets on the top of the Azteca Stadium. And we were up, as, as I came through the tunnel and I see all the people, to me it was like such a powerful image, like seeing all the people and the, the, the atmosphere and all that. But anyway, People talk obviously about Brazil and uh, how they didn't win in Maracaná and always remember Maracaná Stadium and, and they say they used to say that in, originally in 1950 had like 250,000 capacity for fans but everybody was standing but not sitting yeah, yeah. so when I went in 14 to Brazil and saw the new Maracaná Stadium I was kind of disappointed because it wasn't that big really. it was smaller than Azteca Stadium but anyway so let's let's go back a little bit like. I want to go to the World Cup. How do I go from the States? So Qatar Airlines, which is a global airline, obviously, like I see them here from Miami. They have flights from yes, Miami. Yes, from where else from the US? There are daily flights from Miami, uh, from Washington, D.C., from New York, Chicago, Atlanta, I believe. Wow. Uh, Philadelphia, there's a flight. And then, uh, um, I believe, San Francisco or L.A. Uh, yeah, both from the West Coast. Yeah, from the West Coast, yeah, as well. They probably go the other way, right? Go. No, actually, they go... Over, the, over Canada. Oh, I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I 
guess it's shorter. Um, it's yeah. shorter, yeah. But uh, but I think you know it's it's going to be a very interesting experience for the fans uh, to come to Qatar and then. Uh, I think also generally, you know, the Middle East is a place that is very diverse. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different cultures. It's a melting pot of, you know, different, uh, you know, kind of uh, cultures and, and kind of people as well. So I think from that perspective, you know, the, mo- the thing I'm most excited about is for the fans to experience uh, and, uh, learn uh, Qatari yeah. culture and, and yeah. Qatari, you know, hospitality and that kind of the Arab uh, uh, culture is there, you know, because a lot of people are not exposed yeah, to that part of yeah, the world, yeah. and I think this is going to be a very exciting time for uh, not just football, but also for yeah. from a cultural experience perspective, it's going to be very unique, uh, and I think um, you know that's something that I'm personally very uh, passionate about and very excited. That's about. great. Well, hopefully, we'll have a chance to go and yeah. visit before, or during, or after, yeah. because after there's going to be still things that happen. And actually, it's very interesting to, to talk about that, as you say, with the stadiums and the infrastructure and all that. So maybe we can go and I show my Qatar record. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you so, so much. Thank you very yeah, much and good luck. Yeah, uh, I hope to see you in Miami. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks.